the valiant infantry. We are the Alpha team with passion and camaraderie. Hear us as we shout at the top of our lungs. Be calm, be bold, and raise your guns. High up in the air, our comrades fight. Dashing through the sky now like a million bolts of light. We shall spread our wings wide and fly high, soaring, gliding through the endless sky. It's only with our sacrifice that mankind can still exist down here in paradise. To defend our dearest mother earth, we're ready to give up. Earth Defense Force 5, the latest entry in what has become my favorite game series, is finally here. Now the game released a year ago in Japan, and I have waited anxiously for it to be released here in North America. After a long wait, does it live up to my expectations? Or did I have such high expectations that no matter what, it was going to disappoint? To those who are new to the EDF series, the basic premise of the game is you're a soldier in an elite military known as the Earth Defense Force. The Earth is being invaded by aliens and monsters. The EDF is tasked with defending Earth and stopping the invasion. That is the quick summary of it. These games are not story driven and usually the story is an afterthought. What drives these games is the gameplay. Fighting hordes of bugs, flying enemies, drones, aliens. I was expecting a brand new game, but it feels more like a reboot of 4.1. It has some of the same areas that you fight in with some tweaks to it. Yes, it does have some new areas as well, like base 228. You fight above ground and inside the base. The cave missions are back also. Now the layout is different but it's still very similar to 4.1. You still have the transport ships and the mother ships. They've changed a little bit, but overall they're the same. They just have gold plating now. The enemies are a mix of new and old. Series mainstays are still present. The giant piss ants, the gray, red, and the green. The giant spider-like creatures that shoot web. You got the Aranea, which is a spider. The yellow jackets are back. Now some of the enemies got a bit of a makeover. You have two types of drones. One's a round one, and it still has the regular, and it has the heavily armored red one. Then the other type drone is just kind of like a, well, it looks like a propeller or something. And it also has uh, two types, one that's regular, and then you got the heavily armored one. The d -Roy's is back. They also got a little bit of a makeover. They now have a drone as their head. There is some new enemies of the game. You fight what is basically a giant roly-poly. There's also new flying creatures, which are essentially tadpoles with wings. For the aliens, they are giant walking frogs. And you also have aliens that are in a spacesuit. One of them's regular, and then the other one's, like, once again, heavily armored. Urgenis also returns. Now this is an example of the game feeling like a reboot. It is basically the same. But as you're about to feed him, another dinosaur-like creature shows up, and it's Archelaus. The way to defeat it is the way you defeated Ergenis in 4.1. You use the giant robot to punch his face in. I admit I didn't like using it in the last game, and I don't like using it in this one as well. I find it to be so slow, and the controls are just clunky. There are some missions in the game that are basically a repeat from the last game. They just kind of tweak the landscape just a bit. Now our soldier classes are the same. You can choose from rangers, wing divers, aerators, and fencers. I mostly play as a ranger, but do switch to a wing diver on occasion. Some new features in the game is now when you collect items, it'll give you weapons and armor for each class and not just the one that you are playing. Also, if you're a ranger, you can now hold in your thumbstick and he'll sprint. As a ranger, you also have a third equipment slot that can be used to use for a better armored suit or you can equip uh, vehicles like a tank, helicopter, or the bike. You can call them in during the missions. 
like an air raider did in the last game. Now each class still has a huge selection of weapons. As you play on higher difficulties, the more powerful weapons you get to unlock. The multiplayer is still the same. You have two player local co-op and online four player co-op. The EDF games are often called a mindless shooter or over the top game with a cheesy B-movie feel. It may not have the best graphics and it does have some cheesy dialogue. For me, the over-the-top gameplay and cheesy story and dialogue is the allure of it. Every game doesn't have to be a real-world simulator or have lifelike graphics. The gameplay and fun factor is all that matters in gaming to me, and this game has both of them. It did seem to get off to a slow start to me for some reason. Early on, I was having mixed feelings, and I was fearing disappointment. Around 10 or so missions in though, I started getting into it. This is when the I will play one more mission turns into like 5 hours later. Fighting a non-stop horde of bugs and alien is still was such a rush. My final thought is, even though it feels a little like a reboot and it does have some repeat missions, this is still EDF at its finest. I would recommend it to anyone. Hey, at least give it a try, even if it's not your usual type of game. This series has the ability to suck you in and makes it hard to put the controller down. This is another great one in what has become an awesome series of games. Thank you for watching. I would appreciate any support from my channel with a like or subscribing. And also, comments are always welcome. This is Moke, and I will see you next time.